Nibo has given us a couple of updates in the last couple of months and we'll be covering them to see what we can do in the app now. Hey guys, it's Ropsy, back with Paperless X, a channel dedicated to easing your digital transformation. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications to join the family. If you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. To master the use of the apps that we cover on this channel, make sure you head over to our second YouTube channel, Paperless Humans, for both free and paid courses. You can also access them on our website via Patreon. And we even have them on Udemy, if you prefer that. We will have a link to all of that in the description down below. The homepage has dramatically changed and it looks awesome. I love how our folders are looking smaller, modern, and neatly packed. We can even change our notebook thumbnails to lists, and they look much better than the thumbnails we've always had in the app. Nibo 6 is exactly what you'd expect from a handwriting note taking app in 2024. I never expected the app to have this kind of look because it is very different from other apps in this niche, but this looks amazing. It just makes you want to use the app and stay in the app. We could create notebooks and documents before, but now we have board option. I wonder what that's about. Page colors and templates. We've always had those. So far, it doesn't feel very different. It feels like they just moved some features we already had to a different part of the app. See what I mean? So a board is an infinite canvas, which is what we had with notes before. Seems they just switched names around with that one. Let's see what differs with the notebook, because the infinite canvas is now called a board, which I think is the perfect name for it. Notebooks now look like what we have in every other handwriting note-taking app. You get a few page size options, which is better than not having any, which is what we've always had. But we still look forward to having more size options in the future. You also get orientation and colors for your notebook cover. I would obviously want an option to turn this off, but in due time, I suppose. You still have page colors and patterns, and of course, language. I was expecting some line spacing options, but we don't have those, and I became curious to see how that would work out. And it seems we're using the zooming feature to adjust our line spacing. It works for an infinite canvas. Not sure how that would work for fixed pages. I mean, just by looking at it, even before I counted the squares in a single line, it's a huge A4 page. It's a natural and just doesn't feel right if you've used a lot of A4 pages. It just feels a bit off. We're limited to a single template. And you start seeing the problem with not having line spacing options. Firstly, without a zoom percentage display, I don't know how zoomed in I was on the square paper. Secondly, the app itself has different spacing. The line spacing is very different from the square one. At least dotted and square paper seem to use the same scale. If you use those two, you shouldn't have a problem if you want to switch between them. The fixed page is superimposed on an infinite canvas, and that probably contributes to the terrible page scrolling we have currently. I love that the toolbar remains consistent throughout the different modes in the app. It's one of the best things about Nebo. You're not having to learn different tools every time they change a mode or every time they introduce a new mode. So you can do pretty much everything you can do in Nebo in this new mode. I wish we had the option to convert all the handwriting on the page to text. That is a feature that probably only Nebo can bring to the handwriting note-taking world because of their technology. We do have the normal OCR engine that uses your lasso tool, of course, and is very accurate, but, you know, Nebo can bring something new in this sphere, which could be exciting. The notebook is a very basic one at this point, but we're seeing Nebo steps towards becoming a full handwriting note-taking app with a lot more to offer than other apps on the market.
The other feature that caught my eye was the new study space we have in the app. Nibble can create a study set for you in seconds, both from handwritten or converted notes. It generated a few inaccurate responses, like the calcium question. It's here where we need some way to correct it at least. Some feedback would be very important because this is only 13 questions. Imagine if it was longer content that you don't really know. That is the challenge with AI, is it not? It would help if the app started supporting multiple instances. That could be a way to easily reference your notes on the side. But in some apps where you have to manually create study sets for your notes, Nibo does it for you without any extra work on your part. And that is very useful AI. If you're using Nibo, let us know if you found the study sets useful. Because with all the AI that is being thrown in our faces, occasionally we find some that is useful. And Nibo, the MyScript company, has a history of creating useful AI tools. Smart highlighting is still a hit and miss though. At least when I tried it, it wasn't working. Um, one thing I love about the AI in Nibo is that it doesn't cost us any extra. We don't have to buy credits and the developers haven't switched to a subscription model. Yet the app offers one of the most useful and functional AI tools you can use. And that is one of the main reasons to love Nibo, isn't it? The updates in Nibo 5 are not nearly as exciting, but there are some significant ones. When your PDF pages have loaded, they seem to take a while. You can select the text in your PDF. At the moment, it's not accurately selecting exactly what you want. But when you do get it to work, you have AI at your fingertips to summarize, explain, or quiz you about it. They really should bring support for multiple instances. It is the only feature that is limiting the AI potential in the app. What do you guys think about that? And just when I was thinking the AI is brilliant, it goes and asks me random questions that have nothing to do with my selected text. We now have a recycle bin. It doesn't say how long it keeps your documents for, so it's probably safe to assume that it doesn't delete them at all. That's usually the case if you're not warned about it. I had to try my luck with the improved highlighter for PDFs. It's quite decent. Nibo has one of the best highlighters you can use in a note-taking app. Who else thinks that? Lastly, we now have a rectangular lasso tool, which obviously doesn't work on your PDFs, but works on your notes in the app. We'll also work on your annotations on the PDF, of course. I love that Nibo is making significant strides towards becoming a contender for our traditional handwriting note-taking apps. That will just open up a lot of possibilities for digital note-taking that we currently don't have and can only dream of. Which of these updates do you like most? Do tell.